Hello everybody, my name is Shadow Duke, and welcome to the first Iron Man money making guide. As an Iron Man, you're going to need money to get supplies and materials, but it can be hard to earn enough for the supplies that you need. This guide will show you 6 different methods on how to grind some GP. Also note that some of these methods have other benefits other than just money. The first money maker on this list are quests. Quests can be helpful to level up and unlock places, items, and other benefits, but they can also get you a lot of money in the process. As you complete quests, you'll earn quest points. Some will give you 1, while others will give you up to 6 or even 10 if you complete quests like Recipe for Disaster and Dimensions of Despair completely. For every 25 quest points earned, you can claim a dice from May's Quest Caravan located south of the Varric Lodestone. When claiming the rewards, however many quest points you have at the time will determine what rewards you get. You can currently get a total of 4 dice, a tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, and tier 4 dice. Each die contains coins in them as well as a random clue scroll reward. The level of clue scroll reward item that you get is determined on the tier of the dice as well. So tier 1 is going to be easy, and tier 4 is going to be elite. Each one of these dies are going to be earned by achieving different milestones. Tier 1 dice are earned for your first 25 to 100 quest points, and you'll earn 250k from each one opened. Tier 2 die are earned from 125 to 200 quest points and give you 500k each. Tier 3 die are earned from 225 to 300 quest points and give you 1 mil each. And finally, tier 4 die are earned from 325 to 400 quest points and they'll give you 2.5 million each. After getting all the dice from each tier, you'll earn a total of 17 mil. This method isn't measured by GP per hour since it all depends on what quests you complete and how fast you do them, but it's great cash early on while you start the quest grind. The best part is there's technically no requirements since to start this it all depends on what quests you want to do first. For any account starting out, I would highly recommend starting your account with this method. Just keep coming back to the caravan every once in a while to get a nice payout. Next up we have the gullible tourists. This is a good one for lower level accounts since the requirements can be attained relatively quickly. The only requirement is to access Menafoss after the Jack of Spades quest. Other than that, all you need is level 1 thieving. Be aware that if you start this method at level 1, you'll most likely get caught a lot, so it might be worth getting a higher level before you start. As an example, I started to do this at level 30, and it seemed to be working alright, but I did fail a decent amount of times. Because of this, the amount you earn will be highly dependent on your thieving level as well as RNG. You can wear items like the Gloves of Silence to increase your success rate when thieving, and Feather Fingered Necklace to prevent you from getting stunned. The gloves can be made at the Varrock Fancy Dress Shop with Dark Kebet Fur, which can be hunted for in the Pisca Terrace Hunting Area. A Feather Fingered Necklace is an Opal Enchanted Necklace. Be sure to bring several of each because they do break with use. As you pickpocket the tourist, you'll always get 30 GP and rarely you'll get a small Menophyte gift offering. This offering is really what you want to get a lot of. There is no way to increase your chance of getting them, but you should get a decent amount of them as you pickpocket. I tested this method on two different accounts. One account has level 42 thieving, and the other one has level 93. The low level account was able to get 51k raw cash and 5 small offerings. The high level account was able to get 87k raw cash and 10 offerings. Luck does play a lot into this, but when you have higher thieving levels you'll fail less, so you'll have more opportunities to get these offerings. The low level was able to do 1,900 pickpocks in an hour, whereas the high level one was able to do 2,900. But the real money comes from the offerings. After opening the offerings on my low level account, I was able to get 289k. The high level one got 463k after opening. Therefore, this method may not be the best, but it does give you a decent amount of thieving experience, and it's a low effort. Another thing to note is that the offerings can also give you useful items, like charms, jewelry, and even better, onyxes. It's very rare, but you do have a chance of getting either one onyx, or 8 to 10 onyxes, or even an onyx ring, or an onyx necklace. So this method is decent if you want to get money, as well as thieving experience, and potentially some onyxes. Next up, we have safe cracking. It's not only a good way to get money, but it's also semi-AFK and great thieving experience. In order to do this method, it will require a decent amount of preparation. The first requirement is level 62 thieving, which can be attained rather quickly since thieving is a very fast skill to train in general. Once you've done that, you'll need to do the thieving skilled caper, which is a series of mini quests. Once that's done, you'll need to go to various locations around RuneScape to open up these safes. 
I'll leave a link in the description that shows you the routes that you can take while doing these safe crackings. Just choose one that's appropriate for your level and then follow that route. In this video, when we tested it, the low level count did the safes in the Mistalin region, while the high level count did the safes in the wilderness. While doing this method, make sure you at least have your stethoscope and your looting bag. The trick for this is to do the route in order so that by the time you crack the last safe, the first one you open should have respawned by now. If you're actively clicking on the blue flashes to unlock them faster, then you might need to wait around a little bit for the first one to respawn. If that happens, be patient, hopping worlds won't do anything. When you're done with the run, or your looting bag is full, return to Thieves Guild in Lumbridge. Right click on Robin to fence your items and empty your looting bag. Then right click on Darren to hand in all your special items. Make sure to choose money instead of pilfer points if you're looking for GP. Unlike Gullible Taurus, this is less RNG based and has more to do with consistent GP per hour. While doing some testing, something very interesting actually happened. I tested the route for level 62 safes and level 90 safes on two different accounts. While working with the level 62 safes, I had to wait around a little bit for them to respawn because I did not have access to all the safes in the region at the time. I was also being active with my clicking. Multiple times during the trip, I had to go over to the guild to turn in my items because my looting bag would get full. At the end of the hour after turning everything in, I ended up making 726k. After that, I tested with a higher level account and then did the tier 90 safes in the wilderness and two safes in Camelot Castle to give the wilderness safe time to respawn. To be most efficient with this method, you do need to complete the Spirit of Summer quest, so that way you can get Jenica's ring. This will allow you to teleport out of the deep wilderness with a shortcut. After turning everything in on that account, I ended up making 600k, so oddly enough, I made less money on the higher level safes than I did on the lower level safes. It's worth noting that the higher level safes have 4 to 5 locks, while the lower level ones only have 3. Because of that, it seems like the lower level safes will grant more money per hour simply because you could open more of them. Still, the difference isn't too drastic, the wilderness safes have great experience with them, so they're still a valid option. Now, let's get into some combat options. Turrets are creatures that you can fight once you reach level 55 Slayer. You also need level 55 magic for this method, since you want to be casting high level alchemy. You can find Turrets deep inside the Fremenic Slayer dungeon. In order to kill them, you'll need to use one of a few specific weapons. You can easily buy a leaf bladed spear from any Slayer Master, or you can craft your own broad bolts and arrows if you've unlocked it with Slayer Points. You can actually also buy the ammunition with Slayer Points at a much cheaper rate. Bring along a stack of nature runes and fire runes so you can cast high level alchemy as you get items. They drop a lot of items that you can alk for GP, like salvage and battle staffs. If you're level 60 plus combat, you should be fine with a little over half of an inventory of food. And that's all it takes, just fight, loot, and alk. After alking everything, I got about 886k GP in an hour of doing this. Another good thing about turrets is you can also get gems, limperts, herbs, and herb seeds from them. If you have a herb bag, herbicide, seed aside, or a gem bag, those would come in handy as well to save inventory space. And just to show you, I ended up getting 31 limp roots, 47 herb seeds after an hour of doing this. So if you want money and herbal or supplies, this is a pretty good method for that. Another combat money maker is fighting spiritual warriors. You'll need 68 slayer to kill them, along with 55 magic to cast high alchemy. Any combat style will work for this, so just pick your best. I recommend to equip some sort of Ceridomen and Zamorak god item. On screen there's a list of some easy to get god items. By wearing these items, mobs from the Sarah and the Zami factions will not attack you automatically, so it will make your trip easier and you'll take a lot less damage. In the area that you're going to be fighting the spiritual warriors, you're not going to need to worry about bandos or armadil followers. I would also recommend bringing a Beast of Burden if you plan on staying for the full hour. You could bring two Terror Birds, two Tortoises, or one Yak. Bring Nature and Fire Runes for high level alchemy, and fill up your inventory with food, but leave a couple spaces free so that way you can pick some items up. If you're a lower level, fill up your Beast of Burden with food too. The Warriors do drop Sharks, so the Beast of Burden is mostly to store those Sharks so you can bring them back to the bank, since they do have value. Be sure to bring an extra pouch if your Beast of Burden won't last the full hour. If you want to get some prayer experience while killing these, bring an Ectoplasmator. And bring a herb bag so that way you can pick up the herbs that they drop. To get to the Spiritual Warriors, you need to get to God Wars Dungeon 1. If you can't use the Warriors Retreat boss portal, you're either going to have to teleport to Trollheim, or you're going to need to run up to the mountain using climbing boots. 
Once you're in the dungeon, the best place to fight the spiritual warriors is southeast right before the agility shortcut to the Ceredomen encampment. As you fight, you'll get all sorts of salvage you should alk. They can also drop super defense, attack, and strength potions, which are good to drink as you use them and then store the rest to bring back to the bank. What I typically do is I'll combine all the three doses until they make four doses. Every little bit of space that you can salvage is worth doing. After a little over an hour here, I made a little under 1 mil. This profit is assuming that you make your own runes, but even if you bought them, the difference isn't too drastic. It'll only be about 20k. On top of that, I walked away with over 20 sharks and super potions. With a higher combat level, you can now start doing Elite Dungeons 3 trash runs. Even though you can solo it, it'll always be more efficient to do it in a group. If you don't have the portal access in the Warriors Retreat, the easiest way to get there is to teleport to Tavalry, and then run south. Next to the bank, there is a dock where you can take a boat to get to the Elite Dungeons 3. While at the bank, I recommend gearing up with the best combat gear that you have, and use weapons and abilities that have AoE damage. When you're geared up, go to the dock southwest that I mentioned before, and then sail to the Shadow Reef. The creatures in this dungeon will drop Rune Salvage and Reef Relics, which can all be alked for a good price. Some areas in ED3 have large group of mobs that you can mow down to get a lot of items very quickly. Just keep heading through the dungeon and kill everything you see, except for the sea horrors, because they have a lot of HP, hit very hard, and they don't really drop too much. It's just not worth killing them for the time it takes for what you get. The mini bosses in the dungeon all drop the same alkables that the normal monsters do at the same drop rate, so don't waste your time fighting them unless you want to get tokens as well. You want to keep going until you reach the first boss. Once you clear out the mobs in that area, teleport out, reset the dungeon, and then repeat the process. You don't want to go past that point because the time it takes to kill the Leviathan, plus the increase in mob difficulty afterwards, will make the run less efficient. After doing this for an hour, I ended up getting 85 rune salvage, 122 common relics, 24 uncommon relics, and I also picked up over a mil's worth of coins. So after alking everything, I made a total of 5.6 mil in one hour. On top of that, I was also doing it solo, so it probably would have been more if I was in a group. Obviously this method could be hard to do if you're a lower level, or are wearing lower level gear. When I did this, I was wearing masterwork armor with a noxious scythe, so if you're using a lower level setup, then you're obviously going to get a lower rate as well. When referring to lower levels, at first I didn't really think a level 70 would be able to do it solo. But after testing it myself, it looks like that a solo level 70 can do it as long as they don't go as far as the main account. If you do plan on doing this solo, I recommend that you kill the first three groups of monsters, and then you just reset the dungeon there. Because if you go past that, you'll end up having to fight two zealot mages, and they're very difficult to kill and they take very long. So it's a lot faster to just reset the dungeon and start from the beginning. As I mentioned before, all the monsters in this dungeon have the same drop rate of the items that they can drop, so there's no point in killing harder monsters when you can just kill the easier ones over and over again. This does make the grind a little bit more tedious, but it's what you gotta do at these lower levels. After doing this on my Iron Man with just tier 70 armor and weapons, I was able to get 3 mil in that one hour. Now I did get very lucky and ended up getting a rare relic which cost 1 mil, so even if we're not including that, it's still extremely good for a mid-level Iron Man, especially since we're also getting combat experience. So as far as this method goes, it's amazing for mid to high level Iron Men. And that's going to be all for the Iron Man money making methods for now. We do plan on coming out with more Iron Man guys in the future, especially more money making ones because there's definitely a lot of untouched territory, so stick around for that. So if you found this guide useful in any way, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. And be sure to check us out on Twitch. We do stream regularly there and we have masses every single week and a lot of fun doing it. I'd also like to give a special thank to all of our Patreon supporters. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.